When the House passed the infrastructure bill on Friday, it had been nearly three months since the bill passed the Senate. That's because progressive Democrats and centrists were in a standoff over whether to pass the infrastructure bill first or wait to pass it with the larger Build Back Better plan. In the end, they did compromise. And it was the Congressional Black Caucus who brought together the two sides. 13 House Republicans also voted for it. And that makes sense because infrastructure is like a good thing. Everybody agrees, right? We want bridges. We want roads. We want clean water. It's trains. We want that. Like in Japan, where it looks like a super speedy thing from the future. All the things that we need for a country to run. But now, those Republicans are under attack by some other GOP members, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who tweeted out the phone numbers of all the Republicans who voted for the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which she called part of, quote, Joe Biden's communist takeover of America. Now, some of those Republican House members say they are getting threats. I'm sensing a theme of tonight's show. And they could even face punishment from within their own party. Punchbowl News is reporting the Republican leadership is preparing for rank-and-file lawmakers to attempt to strip committee assignments from the lawmakers who voted for the infrastructure bill, not the lawmakers who are threatening people's lives. This is a really interesting time to be alive. Joining me now to discuss is Democratic Congresswoman Bar Brenda Lawrence of Michigan. She is the second vice chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, and I'm so grateful to you for being here tonight, Congressman Woman. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I know that you heard a little bit of the conversation I was just having, um, and you also know what happened with Congressman Paul Gosar. What does it say about today's Republican Party that the backlash is against the people voting against bridges, money for bridges and water, and not the people that are threatening the lives of your colleagues? We are in a very, very interesting time. You know, I lived through the four years of having Donald Trump at the microphone and head of, ahead of our country in the seat of the presidency. And I watched with great interest as I saw so many dominoes falling. And those dominoes was like truth. It was the domino falling of democracy in America being one of morals and standards. And it just dropped and dropped and dropped. Um, I still believe in this country. I believe in our democracy, but I'm so concerned. When you talk about infrastructure, it doesn't have a D or R on it. I often used to tell people when I was the mayor of the city I was in, a pothole doesn't have a R or D on it. It doesn't only affect pol politically the Democrats or the Republicans. You talk about water, this discussion we just had. When you're in the city, the water being available, and in my case, in Flint, I lived through and fought through that process of poisoning, poisoning human beings with our infrastructure of water. So when I hear a vote against infrastructure, I wonder, what are you voting for? What are you opposed to? You know, we haven't invested in our infrastructure since the New Deal over 90 years ago. So come on, get with the program. The whole world is advancing. You talked about China and Japan. I've been to Japan. I've seen their amazing accomplishments with the infrastructure. So the Black Caucus did step in. I'm so proud of the leadership of, of my chair, Joyce Beatty, and the chairs of, in, the, in, the Dem, in the Democratic Caucus, the chairs of Congress, who are members of the Black Caucus, with the leadership of the Black We sat down and we said, look, Everybody wants to get to the same place. It's just some people want to take a train. Some people want to take a plane. Some people want to ride their bike. But at the end of the day, we must get this bill passed. And we were able to sit down with Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and, 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 and Mr. Clyburn to talk about how we can work through the sausage. And, to, to, and I've been telling everyone, we landed the plane. It was a lot of turbulence, but we landed this plane, and now we have to start working on the Build Back Better. I mean, one of the things that's it's so frustrating to me about the infrastructure bill 
um, and you know, Republicans' response to it being passed is that we know they're going to take credit. <laughs> we know they're going to go out and take credit. They always do that. Uh, they did that with the American Rescue Plan. Um, and we, as in people who observe Republicans, this is what they do every time. Uh, they go yeah. out and they take credit for these good policies. Do you think that the Democrats are going to be able to message to the American people that it was you, who, um, uh, Democrats, who were really able to, to get this accomplished, especially if you're able to add on Build Back Better um, and then go out and, and be able to tell the American people what, what, are, what the benefits are? I am so surprised when I see the polls that say they don't have trust in President Biden. And whenever someone starts that, I always ask them, I said, did you receive a stimulus check? Did you cash it? Do you know where that came from? That came from the president's agenda. This, this transportation bill is President Biden. Who got vaccines out where over 70% of America has a vaccine to keep them alive and stop this pandemic? Joe Biden. And now when we talk about Build Back Better, my goodness, investment in child care, investment in pre-K, lowering prescription drugs, combating uh, climate change, it is Joe Biden. And we, with the leadership of Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party, we are going to pass this bill. We need to pass it. We, we have now passed infrastructure where we're gonna start fixing those problems with contaminated water pipes, water that is the result of lead in pipes. We're gonna fix roads. We're gonna upgrade Amtrak. My goodness, if anyone rides Amtrak, you know it's a bumpy ride, oh my goodness. And you go to, to Japan, it's almost like you're on an airplane. It floats, it speeds. It, it is, we are so behind. And this agenda is the Democratic agenda, led by our president, Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, I've never been to Japan, but I have seen the photo comparisons of Amtrak versus other countries. I and I have big envy. I'm like, why don't we have the cool train? This is, this is whack. <laughs> do, do you think that, do you, Congressman, do, do you think that the, the, the Republicans in, in, the, in the House and, and even in the Senate have any interest in governing. You know, a piece of this infrastructure um, conversation is about the fact that you're passing policies that are going to benefit the American people um, as part of your job as governing. But I don't know. Are we past the point where we should have an expectation that the Republican Party is engaged in that same project? Because I'm not so sure when I see a Marjorie Taylor Greene or a Paul Gosar. I think they're doing something else. I mean, Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene is not even in any meetings. She's not in any meetings, like all day long, not in any meetings. And so I, I don't know what they're doing. So I, I was hopeful when we actually received Republican votes for the infrastructure bill. It's unfortunate that they're now being targeted for taking care of America, for investing in the infrastructure to care for the people of this country, which is why they're sent to Congress. However, in the Senate, it's a whole nother story. And we know we had um, the, the, the uh, leader of the Republican Party in the Senate say that not a single bill will be passed under his leadership that he would not pass any bills, regardless how good it is, under the Trump administration, unless Trump wants it. Things like voting rights, George Floyd, um, we know uh, violence against women, all these things that everyone kind of agree on. There's no disagreement, but a Democrat put it forward. So we as the Republicans, will wear our crown of victory and say, we will not support it. And somewhere along the line, that becomes victory. And who suffers? The American people. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. 
You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.